So we're going to take a look at how to uh, get Git installed on a computer, uh, get it configured for your use, and then also to uh, configure to a remote repository. And we're going to be using GitHub. So the first thing that we want to do is go to GitHub. So github.com. And we want to sign up for an account. This free account will be just fine for your homework and for the group project. The free account has only public repositories. And a public repository just means anybody can pull from it. Um, they can't push back to it, but they can pull from it and see your work and see what you've been doing. Um, if you're going to use this in the future for your, your own projects or for any kind of consulting or something like that, you might want to look at stepping up to one of these paid accounts that get you a private repository. And a private repository means uh, it's just you that has access. If you choose to grant access to somebody else, uh, you have complete control over that. But for now, for our class and for the, the homeworks, this, uh, the, the free open source account will be just fine. Now this account is yours. It's all about your projects. We also have a GitHub organization. And the reason I asked you to send me your GitHub user account name was so that when we form groups for the project, I can put you together into groups within our organization. And then the three or four of you in that group will share a common repository that you can use. For now, get the free account uh, and go ahead and get signed into it. And Git is a little cumbersome to move around, but usually clicking up here on your name gets you to a good place. And here, uh, this is kind of just your overview of your account, uh, what's happening with your account. You can click on repositories. And you, if you had repositories in here, you could see them. And account settings is another important piece. Make sure that your name and that your email is included. So once you are able to get logged into GitHub, things are looking good there. The next thing that we want to do is download the Git command line. And to do that, we're going to go to git-scm.com. And if you're on a Windows machine right here, right in front of you, it's easy to click and, and get. Um, you can also go into Downloads and grab it for Mac or Linux or anything else that you might be using. Now, if you're using a computer in the C231 uh, computer lab or in the MIS lab, this git command line is already downloaded and installed. You'll just need to configure it. But if you want to run this on your home computer, uh, your laptop or whatever for, uh, for your homework, um, feel free to go here and grab the git command line and, and download it. So for our initial um, uh, homeworks here where we're learning Git and we're working with uh, HTML and uh, CSS and those assignments, I want you to use the Git command line. It's kind of cumbersome. It's a little hard to get our head wrapped around. But once we understand it, we'll really understand it. And we'll be able to troubleshoot any of the other uh, GUIs or anything like that that we might use later on. As you move farther into the project, if you would like to try to use a Git GUI, uh, you're welcome to do that. So you could download it and install it on your machine. There's several Git GUIs around. Um, you could also um, uh, Git GUI may be installed uh, in the computer labs. I'm not I'm not sure about that. So you've got the files downloaded. It's just a default install. There's no special settings or anything uh, special for it. Uh, uh, just do the get the regular uh, default install. And when you have gotten the default install uh, completed on a Windows machine, you can go down to the Start menu, into the Git menu, and you're going to click on Git Bash. Git Bash pulls up this little command shell. Uh, it's a Bash shell. Uh, and it's all command line from here on. If you're going to use um, Linux, you can just open the regular terminal window. Uh, on my Linux machine, it's back under Utilities. There's one called Terminal. You open it up and you get here. No matter what version you're on, if you want to test to make sure that it's installed correctly and it's working for your account, you can type git space dash dash version 
and the get version will be returned to you. If you get the version back, you know that it's installed and gets accepting commands and working correctly. We can do that same thing here on Windows. And now we know that git is installed, configured, and working correctly. Now the one thing to take note of inside this bash shell, it's all Linux commands. So it's not DOS command line stuff, but it's actually Linux command line stuff. And the first command that we're going to talk about really quick is pwd, print working directory. And if you do that, you can see that we're on the C drive. On the C drive, we're in the users folder. And within the users folder, we're in the Colbert folder. Uh, if you are doing this on your home machine, you should see something similar to this. If you're doing it here at the university in the MIS lab or C231, this is probably going to be H because the path is set to your H drive. So what that means, all of the settings that we make are going to be saved in this path. So if you're on a university machine here in one of the MIS labs, you only have to set this up once. And when you set it up once, everything is saved on your H drive. When you go log on to another lab machine, your H drive is is present and so it has access to all those settings. But if you're going to work on multiple machines uh, that that are not sharing an H drive, then you're going to have to configure this multiple times. So for instance, you might have to configure it once to use in the MIS and C231 labs. That would be your H drive. Then you might have to configure it a second time to use on your laptop. And you might have to configure it a third time if you also want it on your home computer. Um, so every every installation uh, except for that, MI, that special lab situation will require you to configure this. What this print working directory, what this is doing is basically showing us the path. So in Windows lingo it looks like this. We're in the C drive. We're in the users folder. We're in the Colbert folder. So now you can kind of visualize where you are. So now that we kind of know where we are, we understand uh, where our files are going to get saved, we can start doing some of the configuration. And we have a few global configuration options to make. The first thing we want to configure is the username and this will match the username on your GitHub account. Now another nice thing about a Linux bash shell or Linux command line, just press the up arrow and it'll show you the last command. Then you can backspace over it and let's set the user email. And again that email should match the GitHub email as well. The last global option that we're going to set will be a color user interface. We're going to set that to true. And that just makes it a little more user friendly. Uh, makes the git command line a little more user friendly. Okay, we have those things set. The next thing that we want to do is configure our local git installation here on our computer to use SSH when it communicates with GitHub. This way our username and password will be sent encrypted. SSH is an encryption, encrypted protocol so the username and password going back and forth uh, will be sent encrypted. Nobody can see what it is. And to do that the first thing we need to do is make a public uh, key, private key, key pair for SSH. So we'll run the keygen program SSH-keygen we're going to use the RSA algorithm. And we're going to make sure that we're using the same email that we just used up here in global and that the same email, it's the same email that's on our GitHub account. It wants to save this key pair. It wants to save it on the C drive in the users folder in the Colbert subfolder, in the hidden, which is that little dot, 
SSH folder uh, into a file named ID underscore RSA. That is just fine, so you can hit enter. Now I already had one, so it wants me to overwrite it. I'm going to say yes. If you didn't have one, uh, you may have to actually type the word yes. It may prompt you for that. And then it's going to want to know the passphrase. This would be the same password. The same password that you use on your GitHub account. And if you don't type it correctly the first time, as I didn't, uh, you'll have to redo it. And eventually here we get uh, that the public key has been saved into id underscore rsa dot pub. And here's the key, the beginning of the key. So now that we have that key, I want to put it in the Microsoft clipboard uh, so that I can paste it into GitHub. So to put it on the clipboard from the command line, I'm going to use clip less than And now that private key, the contents of that private key has been placed into the Microsoft clipboard and I can paste it. If you're using um, Macintosh, if you're using Mac, um, you can still do it. Only the command uh, to copy the, the, the key is PB copy and it'll look like this. All right, so now that the, the, the public key is on the clipboard, let's get logged into GitHub and we'll get into our account settings and specifically SSH keys. Now here you can add and you can delete keys as you're done with them. Uh, again you'll probably have uh, you'll have one set of SSH keys when we add it you can give it a title. I would suggest that you call it H drive and that is the set of SSH keys that'll work whenever you log into uh, University of Iowa Computer Lab that has Git installed. So C231 and the MIS Lab. If you're having, if you're also going to have Git installed on your laptop, then you would need to create a second set of SSH keys uh, and just add another line in here. Give it a title. Give it something useful that you can recognize. A simple control V will paste that public key that we copied with the clip command or PB copy and then add key. It'll prompt you for the password. And now that key is installed. Notice I have a different one here for different lab machines because I don't have an H drive. If I had an H drive, I would only need one of these. But it, I have it on my Mac, I have it on my office computer, and then I've got it on a couple computers in the MIS lab. You might have it on your Mac, you might have it on your Windows laptop or desktop, and then you might have it on your H drive. So now that we've added the SSH key, any communication uh, that's going on between Git uh, local and Git remote uh, or between our local repository and our remote repository on GitHub will be encrypted if we're using SSH. So just to prove that it works, we're going to uh, try to connect to it. So SSH dash capital T git at github.com. Connection's been established. It wants the password for that public private key pair. And after you enter the correct password, it'll say hi and your GitHub account name. You've successfully authenticated. Those two pieces tell us that this is working. SSH is working for us. And we are able to authenticate to GitHub. Uh, GitHub does not provide shell access. That doesn't really mean anything. It just means that once you authenticate, you don't get a command prompt or anything like that with GitHub. All you can really do is just push and pull your keys. But finding your name and successfully authenticated are the keys keys to success here. So after you have done this, uh, GitHub is set up to securely push your um, 
uh, your changes when you do a git push it'll take it from the local repository and put it on the remote repository it will do that with through an encrypted channel uh, and you'll be able to to pull down as well through an encrypted channel